Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com and in this video we're going to be talking the new Dream Shaper model which came out quite recently and I want to just give you some ideas about how you might use this one and we're also going to be talking about SDXL. SDXL is a new version of Stable Diffusion. So I was going to do a longer video on Dream Shaper but uh, the news on SDXL came out and what I'll do is just a very quick uh, update as to what this is. If you haven't used this one, I, I, it's one that uh, I've used and it's a very strong model. It allows you to do fantasy images like this, but also very realistic images like this. We can see some of the images that users have contributed and you can see how amazing the, the, the kind of amazing range from very mundane images to completely completely surreal images. It's very good at both. I like this kind of thing where it looks very natural. And I also like this type of thing where it's complete fantasy, but some models can produce one, but not the other. And the results that I've got are pretty amazing. Now you can come here and you can actually uh, look at some of the prompts. This prompt I looked at, we'll take a closer look at this later. It's a guy who literally wrote a poem in the in the prompt and the the ai was able to produce these images just from reading a poem the, the, this image here the guy who did this one has some really nice prompts that i've used uh, but you can see you can come here and see what sort of prompts people are using and a um, couple that i really liked i'm going to point out this one looks amazing i need to take a closer look at that one that looks so realistic people are doing these kinds of things, which is a QR code. And uh, this one, again, this one I really like as well. This, uh, I, if you've seen one of my recent videos and the thumbnail, it might have been inspired by this particular, by, by this particular prompt. And when you look at the, the images in the, uh, in the, in the samples, you can actually see the exact prompts that they used and the details. So those can be used in your own version of uh, stable diffusion, and you can create images that look very similar to this. One image that I really liked was, uh, let's see if I can find it. This one here, it's like, um, pretty surreal. It's look like you're looking at a poster, but also it looks like she's actually kind of coming out from the, uh, from the wall. Anyway, there's a lot of really nice stuff here. This one was the one that I was talking about before. A guy literally just wrote a poem in, in the text prompt. And uh, you can see that it's a text to image prompt up here. And he literally just wrote a poem. And this is the, these are some uh, samples that he, he, he got. Um, over here, you've got some resources used. So he's used a bunch of resources, which are called textual inversions. And if you click here, you can actually see what all of these are about. And he gets very good results using these textual inversions, but these are all available on this website. Uh, another one that I liked was this one here from, uh, from, from this guy here, um, Pope Fred. And it's a really nice one. It's a very simple, it's a fairly complicated prompt, but I, I really liked the way that it created a lot of action inside of the image. And uh, I was able to copy some of the, some of the ideas here, and I'll show you a bit later. And this was another one that really caught my eye. This one, I was trying to do something very similar to this, but I was trying to do it with a lion and I wanted to create a giant lion and I just couldn't do it. It just looked like an ordinary lion, but this guy has done something amazing. It looks grand. It looks really nice. So this is the one that I uh, copied. This is one of the prompts that I copied and I was able to get this really nice image with a lot of light, a lot of action. And I, I would have really struggled to come up with something like this on my own. And uh, you can see within uh, stable diffusion, it can really produce a lot of detail. And this was another one. Uh, I can't remember exactly where I co copied the prompt from, but this is uh, th th this is the result. Very nice one. And I also did the, uh, the the poem. So you can see it's literally a poem. It's literally a poem in the prompt, and it produces these nice images. Unfortunately, I didn't get time to put the textual uh, the textual prompts or the uh, negative uh, embeds. So my ones don't look quite as nice as as the original but i i've met i mean th this actually looks nicer than some some girls i've met in real life now let's take a look at uh, stability ai and the new version of stable diffusion <laughs> 
this is amazing. They came out with a new version of Stable Diffusion. And what we want to do is to just see what it's about. It's one which produces much larger images than the original version. So the original version, you kind of worked with 512 by 512 size images. This one doubles that. And it also doubles the system requirements. So you can get some grand looking images, very large. You don't need to, you don't need to enlarge them to get them this size. System requirements, let's read the system requirements in Weep. Uh, 16 gigabyte of RAM. So in your operating system, you want to have 32 gigabytes of RAM with, with this software. 16 gigabytes is the minimum. An NVIDIA GeForce RTX 20 graphics card equivalent or higher, a minimum of eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now, before uh, a few weeks ago, when I first came across this, they were saying you needed 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So they've obviously done some testing and you can run it with eight gigabytes of VRAM. That's gonna have to be an NVIDIA RTX card. Now you can pick these up from around $200. They can go up to about $1,500, but I'll have a link to Amazon to some recommended cards. We've got about three cards that would do very well at the moment. Uh, that will be the RTX 4080, the RTX 4090, and the RTX 4060 Ti. That's a 16 gigabyte one. Gotta mention that uh, we've got uh, we've got Amazon Prime Day coming up very soon. So if you want to pick up a card, I'll have some links to Amazon, and hopefully some of the cards that I recommend will be possibly on sale on Amazon Prime Day. But it is their biggest. It is their biggest uh, selling day. They, they have more discounts on Amazon Prime Day than, uh, than any other day. That's going to be the 11th or 12th of July. Now, uh, to use this, you can't use it because it hasn't come out yet. But there are a number of places where they do allow you to, to actually test it. They're saying they want to bring it out around middle of July. So it's not long to wait. If you want to, you can go to Hugging Face and they've already got a page for the, this is going to be a 0.9. So it's a pre-release, sign, read the document, log in, sign up. Now, naturally with them allowing some people to test it, there have been some leaks and unfortunately, and I strongly recommend you don't, you, you, you don't have anything to do with the leaks. There are some very, very, um, dangerous files that have been, it, it always happens with leaks. You always get people trying to, trying to scam. So I recommend staying away from the leaks. Wait until mid July, very, very soon, um, when we'll get the official downloads and we can start testing it then. Um, if you do come across any leaks, especially ones that have checkpoint, the checkpoint files, don't use them. They, they, they're not safe. They're not safe to use, uh, but wait until what you can do whilst you're waiting is to go to dream studio. This is one of the places where you can test the new model. It's free at the moment. So I've got some credits and I can test it. Let's do that. We've got a prompt, which is going to be for a beautiful waterfall in a lush jungle with sunlight shining through the trees, serene, peaceful, tropical jungle landscape, high detailed. We can put in a negative prompt. So this is something new. I think this is new. I, I showed you how to use this in a video few weeks ago when I was comparing it with Adobe Firefly and they've improved it a lot since then. You can use one of the images that you've created and you can use that as the basis for, for the, uh, for the diffusion. Um, they've got an advanced section, which you access here and it changes the width and the height you can put in a prompts. So many of the features that we have in the, uh, GUI in the graphical user interface, for the web-based automatic 1111. They've uh, adopted those and uh, we can choose a style as well. So they've sort of copied what Adobe are doing. Should we choose photographic? Cinematic, let's choose cinematic. Anything else in the negative? No, I've got 2.87. For you guys, I'll throw away a couple of credits. Let's generate here. So we dream. And you can see some that I did a bit earlier here. Um, they, uh, they look good. 
they look good. These are, I think, 512 by 512. And they look a lot more realistic than the previous model that they were using. So the previous model for, uh, for our friends, I, I don't think it was the best model that I've ever seen. It, it actually wasn't that good. Oh, so I think what I did was that I changed the prompt. Let's try again. Oh, that looks beautiful. That looks beautiful. So we've got four examples. And we've got the details that we need to replicate it. We can edit the image. Or we can reuse the prompt or we can download the image. So quite a lot of options there and they're looking good now. They're looking very good. We choose edit the image. Let's see. Let's change the negative prompt. So we don't want it to look like a cartoon. We can change the style to photographic and we'll reduce the image count to, to one. So you can see it's fairly generous. This is free. They've given me a uh, hundred plus uh, credits. So you can experiment here. And I think this is a lot safer than downloading some, um, some, some file. Oh, yeah, it's done. Look at that. So they allow us to just go ahead and edit this. We can erase something. Let's see if that works. Okay, I'm not sure how that's supposed to work. No? Okay, um, we can export. We can see the before and the after. Oh, that's interesting. So it was making a selection, but it was making the selection up here. Hmm. And we've got this image here that it produced. So you can see that that's the, that's the original a city made of ice with ice slides. Frozen rivers. This could be what happens when global warming finally reaches its peak and we start going back to the ice age. There's a transform section where we can actually change the size. So let's go ahead and change the size. So you don't need to go and download some dodgy file and corrupt your PC and give over your bank detail to some guy over in, uh, in Moldova. You can go ahead and just experiment uh, with this particular option. So I figured out you have to add new features by clicking on this button here and that will allow you to continue working. So I added a little statue where I erased everything before. And I've created this option for a radiant nebula star cluster. And what else is there? All of that otherworldly stuff. Let's do this dream and let's see what it comes up with. So there's quite a lot of new features that they've introduced and there's a little bit of learning that needs to be done, I think. But so far it looks much more impressive than it was the last time that we played around with this. Let's see, do we have my nebula? Mm -hmm. We don't have my nebula. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, we've got something going on there that could be a nebula. Let's see, let's turn this off. There we are, we've got a nebula going on there. So I've got a little bit of learning to do on how to use this, but I think it's a lot more sophisticated than it was before. Uh, obviously, once you've used up your free credits, you're going to be able to purchase new credits. I think it's about a thousand credits for, for $10.